Thank you all for coming. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you to the men and women of the Savannah Fire Department who work hard and diligently to protect life and property in the city of Savannah. Um, second of all, um, I want to acknowledge that um, there's no substitute for a well-staffed, well-trained, well-equipped fire department. Uh, this fire department works uh, tirelessly to protect, and if you look at our response times and our responses to these recent uh, tragic events, um, it's, I, can't, I can't speak well enough of how dedicated these men and women are towards Savannah. Some of the things, um, first of all, let me say, almost all fires are preventable and we do everything we can to prevent them. We have an amazing fire prevention division and I'll let you hear from them in a minute. Um, but a lot of these fires were preventable. This is our second fatality of the year, which is uh, tragic. Uh, our condolences go to the families. Um, secondly, we're doing a lot. Um, I want to emphasize our fire uh, smoke detector program that we implement to make sure that we provide smoke detectors to residents in Savannah. Also, I want to mention that uh, we are right now going through our risk analysis for the entire city. We're analyzing all the properties to make sure we can have the most appropriate response to these. Secondly, uh, we're meeting with all the stakeholders in the community and working on our strategic plan that will guide the future of this fire department for the next five years. All of these things we're doing to help mitigate and reduce the fire risk in the city of Savannah. Uh, we're also working with our partners at the police department, Chatham EMS, to uh, make sure that we have a coordinated effort to keeping the citizens safe. Um, that said, all of this is being done, but uh, there's no substitute for a well-trained, well-staffed, well-equipped fire department. And uh, we appreciate the public support in helping us accomplish that goal. Um, I won't keep you any longer. I'm gonna introduce uh, our fire chief, um, Fred Anderson, who is uh, our chief fire investigator, and he can talk some more about specifics of these incidents and then we have some of our battalion chiefs and uh, captains who also can speak to some of these recent incidents. Chief Anderson. Thanks, Chief. <clears throat> Good morning, thanks for coming. Um, I'm gonna go over all, just go down a list of all the fires that we responded to and, and uh, address the causes on each one of them. And if you have any questions about any individual incident, I'll be happy to answer this. So the, the first fire in this series was <clears throat> on the 26th of April at 3.10 in the morning, we responded to 504 East 34th Street for a structure fire that had also extended to a neighboring structure at 502 East 34th Street. The cause of that fire was found to be uh, an extension cord being used in the original uh, fire building at 504 East 34th Street. Uh, next was on the 27th at 2.06 a.m. at 2106 East 37th Street. This was a one-room apartment fire. There, the, fire, the cause of this fire was um, we believe the uh, victim of the fire was smoking on his couch and fell asleep in the cigarette. This is the fire we unfortunately resulted in, a, in one fire fatality. Our, our next fire we responded to was also on the 27th. This was at uh, 1.36 p.m. at 917 Old Mill Road, and this is a, an electrical issue. It was what the cause of this fire was found to be. On the 27th as well at 5.13 p.m. at 107 Davidson Avenue, uh, this was a shed fire in the backyard that also extended to another shed and, and property right across the right next door. And this was an electrical issue in, in the original shed fire as well. <clears throat> then on the 28th at 10.47 a.m., we responded to 12722 Golf Club Drive for a small fire. This fire was caused by um, uh, uh, insect repellent being sprayed in a, in a room where uh, gas water heater was and the pilot light ignited the vapors. It was a small fire, did minor damage. The next fire on the 28th of April was at 2215 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. This was a laundromat which was uh, responded there because of a dryer that was on fire. Uh, the fire was uh, pretty much contained to the dryer. There was one victim from that incident transported to the hospital with smoke inhalation. And at 101 East Gwinnett Street on the 28th at 3.39 p.m., we responded to a report of a structure fire. This was a, a fire in a wall that was found to be caused by an improperly discarded cigarette. And the last one on the series was on the 28th at 
7 12 p.m. at 11:30 East 37th Street. This was another shed fire, and the cause of that fire is still undetermined at this time. So I'll take any questions about any any particular incidents. Chief Anderson, I know you mentioned something about uh, where I took the notes about the uh, I think it's Chief about the fire prevention services that the department offers uh, in terms of smoke detectors, things like that. What else does the department do? Can someone just give a call and say, hey, you know, I'd like somebody to come out and give a once over of my home to make sure that there are no exposed wires, that I'm disposing of things properly, that, you know, there's enough space between hot appliances and a wall or, or things like that. Absolutely. We have a program. You can you can contact us through our communication center. You can call here directly and, and um, we will send a company out to do what we call a fire safety a home fire safety survey where a fire company will come out and they'll walk through your house and do exactly what you just point out any fire hazards you may have and if you need a smoke alarm they'll all, they'll install one for you free of charge. Do people take advantage of that very often? Um, we, we do respond to quite a few of them. Uh, I, I don't have the numbers right here in front of me. I think Janelle could probably get those numbers for you. You may not know it. Um, electrical fires are—they are preventable. Um, but they can be, you know, silent that you don't—you don't know about it. But the way you can prevent electrical issues or electrical fires is, if you have any kind of electrical issues at your home, you know, if an outlet just stops working or a light starts, you know, flashing on and off on its own. Have it checked out by someone who's licensed and knows what they're doing. Don't don't just ignore it because are, it could be something much bigger waiting behind that wall that you don't know about. Are you um, ever shocked or dismayed, or what would be? Um, anytime we, we have a fire that's preventable, which are, are most fires, if the, the victim of the fire is not doing all the measures at their disposal to do it, it it's frustrating. Um, and unfortunately, we do see it a lot. And there's a lot of information uh, through the fire department that can be given out to fire prevention. We have a fire prevention division within our, our department that, uh, you know, we have inspectors that go out and do commercial inspections. We have an education program that... Uh, you know, we get the message out, so it is very frustrating. Yes, ma'am. I think most people, including myself, probably think of fires are going to happen to you. That's the most common thing that can happen to you. Right? Is that right? I don't know if it's the most common, but it's, yes, yes. A lot of people think it's never going to happen to me. Um, you know, smoke alarms are probably the single most important thing you can have in your house. They, they, they save lives. And uh, so many times we have fire fatalities that there's no smoke alarm. And that could have been the difference. Uh, some of them did, some of them did, did not. Uh, they were they were not smoke alarms present in all fires. Uh, most importantly, the fire fatality on uh, East 37th Street, there was no smoke alarm. Is this a time of year where you start responding to more fires? Generally, yeah, let's, let's get the, yeah, these, these Chief Harper and uh, Captain Shaw were on some of the scenes, so they could probably answer some questions too. Um, go ahead, Chief. Hey, thank you for coming today. Chief Harper here. Uh, to answer your question, is this time of the year uh, susceptible more fires than others? I would say this time of the year, because of the increase in electricity use due to air conditionings and stuff like that, you see more electrical issues sometimes. Uh, the other thing is, I'm going to go back to Chief Anderson's statement, um, we, we get complacent. People get complacent in what they do to what you do on a normal day basis. You may overlook the safety portions in which you may that need to be in, in, enforced. Um, one of the things that we see electrically is people using improper uh, connections and plugs. They overload circuits. They do, don't use a, a GFI breaker type circuit. So you see that. We even seen that commonly in the, in the string of fires that we recently had. Um, and secondly, I want to say one of the most important points I could stress to anyone, if you have a fire, please don't ever go back into that structure to find uh, uh, somebody or look give that to us let us do that we're trained uh, we have the, the equipment to 
to enter these uh, atmospheres because once you go in there then we have another issue on hand we're also looking for you as well uh, we had several occasions on this weekend that people were trying to go back and get a dog or go get find out if their loved one was in there and, and that poses an additional problem with that so but this time of the year as well is for firefighters uh, hydration we we have to make sure that our our people keep hydrated a lot because you you lose a lot of uh, of water weight uh, when we're fighting fires due to sweat and heat conditions. And which fires were you in charge of? Uh, the Old Mill Road uh, fire and the uh, what was the other Davidson Avenue Davidson Avenue fire. So the neighborhood problem was from how the Old Mill Road fire started. The, the yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That was the one. I'm going to refer that over to Chief okay. Fire Investigator. Yes, ma'am. They were looking for their dog, and that's when we were saying, don't go back. And back. Right. The, the homeowner was really excited to go back in and, and find a dog, and we had to stop him. And fortunately, our guys, we found the, the dog and returned it unharmed. So the word out is good. It was a win win. Any questions? Let, let oh. me just say one more thing. Oh. You know, um, a lot of this is just common sense. Have a fire extinguisher readily available in your kitchen, one in your garage, where most fires tend to, to originate. Two, have a safety plan worked out with your family. Make sure your children know the quick exit, the easiest exits, and smoke detectors. Technology today is so inexpensive. I personally have um, the, the smoke detectors that send me a text message. Even if I'm not home, they will send me a text message saying, hey, you've got an alert on your smoke detector. They're, they're very inexpensive. And if you can't afford one, we'll provide one to you. So uh, all this stuff is, is really easily um, hand, uh, preventable, you know, through this technology and through uh, just basic common sense. So uh, I, I, I hope you emphasize that message for us. Captain Shaw would love to. Uh, Captain Shaw, um, basically we call it uh, Edith drills, exit drills in the home. And we start teaching this to kids at a young age. And a lot of times they bring it home to their parents to help teach them. And what they, what a, one of the assignments are is to make a uh, drawing of their house and have two exits out of every home, out of every area in that house and they have to practice it and the best way to do that is to actually set off the smoke alarm you know at your house and have your kids go through the motions of doing it because nothing works better than practice you know because a lot of times fires happen in the middle of the night they don't happen when you're alert they happen when you're waking up from sleep and it needs to be second nature so exit drills in the home are something that we uh, teach in every school and also uh, anywhere else, community centers, things of that nature, whenever we go to community meetings, we try to push this information out so that people know how to get out of their homes and what are the proper procedures, whether they should open the door or not, or to shelter in place. And how to uh, tell us if they live in a high rise like Drayton Towers or something like that, how to let us know what are the signals, you know, common use signals or a sheet out the window that there's somebody in that room. You know, so we, we try to get this information out and uh, let people know how to protect themselves. That's all. Any questions? Chief Handy is up for our operations. <laughs> you almost made it. Almost. <laughs> uh, a couple of things, several things we've talked about here was the prevention piece of it. Uh, the next piece of it is when the event occurs, is what we're seeing is a delay in notification. That initial call to 911 to get the resources needed to respond is crucial because of how much a fire will develop and spread in a short time frame. That initial call uh, don't really discourage civilians or uh, homeowners to try and extinguish a fire but that initial call to get the resources responding because Savannah Fire Rescue, we staff strategically units throughout the city have stations provided for that equipment to respond in a certain time frame to mitigate those issues. 
So I'd like to go back to just that's very crucial that we have the 911 call initiated. Then if the homeowner tries to extinguish it, that's fine, but the needed resources are coming. If we get there and we're not needed, it's very simple for the supervisor, the battalion chief, to return them, and there's no harm, no foul. I just want to make sure that was clear across that we put that message out. That initial call to 911 to get the needed resources is used. I believe that is some of the mentality and the thought process out there, but we're, we're staffed 24-7, 365 days a year, and the men and women here are ready to respond, and we do get, is it's. I would rather have crews there and be able to jovially joke with the homeowner because it was something they thought was significant that ended up being very minor, and that we kept it at a minor incident, and everybody was safe. And it's very uh, easy for our battalion chiefs to come over the radio and return everyone if they're not needed. So it's not a, it's not a big to-do for us. It's just that we want to ensure that we have everything there because the resources we have can quickly mitigate it. And the quicker we're there, the less damage is going to progress throughout the structure. Thank you. And lastly, I want to uh, thank the American Red Cross. Um, for helping us post incident. Um, they have worked very closely with our people to help uh, relocate uh, those affected by these fires and they're vital to uh, our operation. And I wanna give a thank you to them for what they do to help the citizens and the affected people by these. Uh, we have, we've had water damage in some of these apartments that people are displaced and without their help, uh, these people would suffer more. That's all we have, folks, unless you have any questions specifically or if you'd like to break out with any of our chiefs and captains here, feel free to. Thanks for coming. Thank Janelle, you. do you have anything close? No, no.